the Fox 5 Studios. This is the Red Zone Sports Show. An awesome atmosphere last night at Allegiant Stadium. Check out UNLV football. It doesn't get much better than this. The Rebels capturing the cannon in the season finale. Paint the town red. The Rebels bringing the Fremont Cannon back to Vegas for the first time since 2019, finishing the season strong with a 27 to 22 win over the Wolfpack. We went into the week, you know, all in and about a thousand percent focused on these seniors at Cannon and uh, finishing strong. And I think that. Uh, when you get into a game like this, uh, in a season like we've had, and, 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 a, and a time like this, it's those are tough games. We knew it. You know, all, all the numbers are out the window, um, and you got to go into battle. Coach Arroyo joins me in studio tonight to break down the Rebels' cannon victory on senior night. UNLV honored 10 super seniors last night. We're sitting down with Austin Ajikay tonight in an emotional and beautiful interview as he opens up to me about giving it everything he's got this season for his fiance and two-year-old daughter. And nothing but dubs for the running Rebels. UNLV stays undefeated on the road this week, winning the SoCal Challenge and bringing back the surfboard trophy to Las Vegas. The 7-0 Rebels also dropped 126 points last night. Yeah, 126 against Life Pacific. They look after each other. We've got a, a handful of situations where we've got older guys that have kind of taken younger guys or new guys under their wing. And uh, when you when you talk about the core group of returners, you know that, that they want to win. And the, when you have a group that just wants to win, I think is uh, you, you can have a, a good chemistry. Welcome into the Red Zone. We got an awesome, awesome show on tap tonight. The atmosphere at Allegiant Stadium on the field was unlike any other Coach Royal. I got the best shot right in front of you guys celebrating on the field. This is a moment your players will remember for the rest of their lives. This is a moment, you know, you and I will remember for our rest of our lives. Talk about waking up this morning, what you felt when you saw the cannon in your guys' weight room. Well, I mean, more than anything, it, it's these pictures that, that make you do what we do um, and why we do what we do. To have a senior group uh, be able to come out and, and put in all their efforts um, over the course of a week and really just lay it all out in the line. And, and to finish that way, to finish with the smiles on their faces and their families in, in front of them, uh, to finish with that cannon in our locker room and in their hands is, uh, again, it'll be something they'll remember the rest of their lives. And that, that was really was what we were trying to get imparted across from them this week. All right, college football's most heavy, expensive trophy is sitting in UNLV's weight room right now. But let's head out to Allegiant Stadium last night. The Rebels with just one goal in mind, and that's paint that cannon red and send the seniors off with a win. UNLV looking to finish the season strong after dropping six straight. We'll pick it up in the first quarter. UNLV down six to zero. Wolfpack's Nate Cox airs it out. 75 yards down to BJ Castile, who slips past two UNLV defenders, extending Reno's lead to 13 to zero. The Rebels need to get something going here after four straight three and outs to start the game. But leave it up to the Rebels defense to bring the juice. UNR loses the ball on this play and John is off to the races. A 55-yard scoop and score from Jonathan Baldwin and the Rebels are back in this thing, trailing Reno 13-7. Second quarter, in comes the Tennessee transfer Harrison Bailey for an injured Doug Brumfield and Bailey launches it downfield. 49-yard bomb to Kyle Williams and that's another highlight reel catch from Williams, his team leading fifth touchdown of the season. The Rebels would add another field goal on the board before leading 17-13 at halftime. Kind of a shaky start Start for Harrison Bailey to open up the second half, throwing an interception into the hands of Drew Watts. The UNLV turnover would later lead to a UNR field goal, and the Wolfpack trail UNLV 17 to 16, clawing back. But later in the fourth quarter, UNLV's defense still bringing the juice, still bringing the pressure on Cox down the stretch last night. Cox escapes the pocket and throws a pick into the hands of the JUCO transfer, BJ Harris. He had a big night last night, comes up with a big fourth quarter interception, giving the ball back to UNLV's offense with 10 minutes to play in the Rebels. Capitalize on Harris's pick. Bailey flexing that arm, launching it down 30 yards to Williams in the end zone. He's got like two, three UNR defenders on top of him, but still able to hang on to the ball. Nick Williams goes out with a 
bang in his final collegiate game. UNLV extends their lead 27 to 16, but the Wolfpack, they're quick with it. They respond on the next drive. Toa Towel punches it in from one yard out and UNR trails 27 to 22. This game comes down to the wire. 11 seconds left on the clock, fourth and goal from the three. It all comes down to this. Reno with a chance to score and keep the cannon. Cox looks right, throws into the end zone, and it's knocked away by none other than Jonathan Baldwin. The Rebels take the cannon, hanging on to their 27 to 22 lead. And the crowd goes wild at Allegiant Stadium as Coach Royal gets his first win against the Wolfpack, bringing the cannon back to Vegas. The Rebels stepping up and fighting in their season finale. Every week, we kind of took the mindset to go 1-0, and um, whether we accomplish that or not. We re-attacked every week. Um, that group in the locker room, I would say, is probably the best I've ever been with. Um, just so close, um, worked so hard. Um, today meant a lot to everyone in this community, and I'm glad we was able to get it done for the seniors and um, everybody watching. It was awesome. Well, Coach Royal, I feel like that's just been the tale of the season. Your guys stepping up, fighting, showing that resiliency. Harrison Bailey going in for Doug Brumfield and throwing two big touchdown bombs last night. Are you excited to see the potential in Harrison Bailey and your receivers, Aiden Robbins, just all the weapons are getting back on offense next year? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting to see uh, to see Harrison go in there and, and capitalize on an opportunity that was, that was really big. Um, to go in there and not have any... Very, very few reps. I don't know if any with the ones this week and to yeah. go in and try to operate a game plan that was um, was such a big deal uh, is hats off to him. Hats off to the staff all season for having to work through the, 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 the adversity of being hit the injury bug, hitting us really hard all season. And um, they did a fantastic job. The staff did a fantastic job getting guys and backup guys ready, or younger guys ready to have to compete week in and week out. And so uh, to be able to return and, and to show some of the, some of the, uh, the really strong suits that we've had, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make the corrections we need and to have these guys all coming back is exciting. Robbins, want to talk about him surpassing a thousand yards this season in just his first season with you guys. You're getting him back next year. How fired up does that does that make you? Just getting Aiden Robbins, your the A train rolling for you guys next yeah, year. Yeah, I mean Aiden, Aiden's a, a fantastic does, does a fantastic job behind our O line and uh, Coach Woods putting together a fantastic mm -hmm. you know run plan. Um, and to see those guys in in the first season together, you know, that was the big question going into it was replacing Charles. And uh, we knew we'd be, be explosive if we stayed healthy on the outside. We started showing that right away until we got hurt and then Aiden being the guy who stepped up and, and continued to have a thousand yard rusher in your offense uh, is a big deal. It shows that you've got explosion uh, inside and out and uh, again to get these guys back again to keep them gelling and growing is uh, a fantastic deal to show progress and, and to continue going where we want to go. Yeah Coach Royo has got some weapons coming back for him on offense and defense coming up next is the Jono segment. Jonathan Baldwin was an absolute beast in UNLV's season finale posting a career game against the Wolfpack. We'll hear more from from the sophomore DB and his fight the defense brought in the final moments of last night's victory. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. I let up a big play early, so I just had to keep my composure after that. All my teammates and brothers just came and told me that they got my back, and I also had theirs as well. So um, with that being said, I just knew that I had to fight for my brothers four quarters. Um, my main goal was to just send the seniors out on a good note and uh, set the tone for uh, next season for the underclassmen as well. Jono was on fire last night. I was telling Coach Royal, I don't think I've ever heard anyone call him Jonathan, but we're going to go with Jono in this segment. But an absolute beast last night. He's been a beast all season, but a career night against UNR in the season finale. Eight total tackles, two pass breakups, one in the end zone to call game, one interception, and a 55 yard scoop and score. Jono was on fire last night, Coach. What do you think about the sophomore DB that's only going to grow with you? Yeah, now John has done a fantastic job. Obviously, he's. Uh uh, really come along um, you know he's only a sophomore and so he's got a lot of great football ahead of him but played a huge part in, in last night had an, another couple opportunities looking back at the film this morning to do some more and uh, mm -hmm. you know like we all did there's always place in the game you're like man I could have done here and there but he did an awesome job uh, did an awesome job uh, last night in uh, securing that win 
I've only seen a huge leap in your defense this year under Coach Hayward. Last night, your guys racked up three sacks, five pass breakups, uh, nine tackles for loss. I mean, it was just all over the field. You guys were, you know, only growing this season. What have you seen from your defense this year and that leap they're making under Coach Hayward? Yeah, I mean, all around. I mean, just number one, the mentality that they play with. Uh, there's a connectedness about the group um, that they're playing. That they're playing. They're playing violent. Uh, they've had to, they've had to overcome injuries on, on their side, like we've had on our side on offense. And uh, they've done it with poise and character and grit. And uh, they've played together and and reattacked each week. And so um, I'm excited about all those guys coming back again. Not you know losing AJ is gonna be a big deal, but uh, yeah. just the way the, the way that they've set the tone, uh, that they've drawn a line in regards to how to play this game uh, and with room improvements exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to see all the growth under Coach Hayward. The future is bright with UNLV on the defense side of the ball. Speaking of defense, 10 super seniors were sent out with a win over the team up north. We're sitting down with Austin Ajike, who finishes the season as a top five linebacker in the country, leading the Mountain West with 132 tackles on the year. He, he opens up to me about how hard he's going for his beautiful fiance and daughter. And what's next for UNLV? Could the Rebels be headed to a bowl game? What would have to play out? for UNLV to go to a bowl game. We'll discuss with Coach Arroyo next. You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. I know this year is so important for you and your future and your family. Talk to me a little bit about just how proud you are of, you know, just the work you're putting in so to make sure that, you know, your family has a bright future and just tell me how you're doing this this for your family. Yeah, that's, I mean, you, you just said it right there. I, at the end of the day, I got mouths to feed. So when I come here and I show up at 5 a.m. and then I got crust in my eyes because I'm tired, that, that's all I'm thinking about is just, my daughter and my fiance and, and going hard for them and just so they can have a better life and an easier life. And, uh, you know, I was 19 when I had uh, my daughter and obviously that wasn't easy having to pick up jobs in the off season. And, uh, you know, I worked at Sprouts, uh, stocking the dairy at one point and just finding jobs and finding ways to provide for my family. So, you know, football is a great outlet for me, hopefully where I'll be able to do that in the future. So I'm just trying to put myself in the best position possible so I could take care of them. Um, this season, I mean, you had a breakout season leading the Mountain West with 120 tackles. You just were a beast night in and night out for UNLV. Just talk about how you turned it up a notch this season, knowing it's your last season here at UNLV. Yeah, I think that just goes uh, to show my consistency throughout the off season, just constantly being in here and just working on my craft and whatever my weaknesses were last year, trying to, trying to strengthen those and uh, just watch more film than I ever have before just so I could be ahead and understand what the offenses are trying to do so, so I could be one step ahead. But, um, you know, just being consistent and, and going to work, showing up day in and day out regardless of uh, how I'm feeling and just uh, being there for my teammates. And, and, you know, the coaches came in, Coach Bruno and Coach Hayward, and we installed a new defense. And, you know, obviously as a senior, installing a new defense isn't, isn't the, the greatest thing to do, but. You know, I, I took it. I took it in, and uh, they did a great job of coaching me up, and again, making my turning my weaknesses into strengths. And you know, it's been great ever since they got here. I want to talk a little bit about your NIL, your your new brand, and everything. How exciting was that this year to make your own brand and and really put your name out there? Yeah, super exciting, super exciting, and you know, just the being involved in the whole process and designing the shirts and going back and forth back and forth with uh, Kyle from Vegas Varsity. He did a great job of kind of. You know, I had the ideas and then he was just putting it on, on the shirts and the hats and, you know, we were able to click during our collaboration and he saw what I was, you know, maybe I was struggling putting into words, but he had an idea of what I was trying to get at. So, you know, it's been great working with him and then just, just when I walk in the building and I see people wearing my shirt, it, you know, it puts a smile on my face. and. It just makes me uh, excited and proud. AJ, your teammates only raved about you. Maybe some of the younger guys on defense, you know, said they really looked up to you. You're definitely a leader on the team this year. What kind of impact do you hope to leave the younger guys on defense? Just a work ethic is, is my main thing. And, you know, it feels good knowing that people are looking at me and watching my every step. And it makes me uh, got to be on my toes more and, and to be here more often and just putting in that extra work and I'm in the weight room doing extra and I see them watching and I know I know I'm leaving an imprint on them and you know guys like Noel and JD and, and Jono they have that same work ethic and that same fire that I have and you know it feels good to to see them trying to trying to follow my footsteps in a way but um, you know I just I 
you know, I talk about legacy a lot, and I, and I just wanted to leave a legacy here and uh, just to have my name remembered in this building. Just incredible sitting down with Austin and, and seeing him grow, seeing his family grow with you. It's been great to see him. Just his consistency from game one till the very end of the season, just the way he worked day in and day out. What did you see from Austin on GK and the impact he's leaving on your defense? Yeah, I mean, he's going to leave He's going to leave a huge impact on the program, um, and not only the defense. I think that he's just a great example. There's there's a lot of examples in, in college football where guys make excuses for, for having having kids at a young age or having having to work in, in the summer to make a little extra ends or to have a senior change, a defensive coordinator, to have mm -hmm. to fill a gap. People, a lot of people don't remember we were we were questioning who would fill a gap that was there from last year for that someone transferred out. Mm -hmm. Would he step up and do that? There's a lot of things there that a lot of boxes that, that he had to check off to not make excuses back, not negotiate with himself with that he really hit the switch. And, uh, and bought in and had maturity and discipline and commitment. And, uh, and I think that that goes a long ways. And a lot of those things we'll use um, as fuel as we continue to, to progress. And he'll be, uh, he'll be the catalyst for, for all the things we do in the future in a lot of ways. I want to quickly touch on the 10 super seniors that were honored last night. Uh, just awesome to see them with their families out there. But the 10 super seniors, I know you mentioned it's such a special night to honor them as well. But what kind of impact do those those veterans leave on, on your program? I know a lot of the younger guys always mentioned the super seniors. Yeah, I mean, we took we took a lot of time. I think it's really important uh, to take time in the, in the program all week. Um, each day we started with a few of those guys. They'd lead the whole they lead the whole program and, and the mm -hmm. team meeting. They'd start. We'd start with them and, and what was on their hearts and, and what we needed, what they needed from us uh, in that day, and what they needed from us this week. And every one of them got a chance to get up front of the team. And I think the team had understood that the importance and the and the value in that moment. And uh, it goes by fast. A lot of them had some real, a real good sentiment to those young guys into the program. And uh, I think in that moment it was meaningful, and, and it came out on Saturday night. Yeah. Well, like you just mentioned, this football season flew by. So what's next for UNLV? Will we know by the end of the week if UNLV will play in a bowl game or not this season? There's a lot going on right now, but if there aren't enough six win teams to fill all 82 bowl game spots, UNLV could be one of those five win teams to fill a bowl game spot based on their academic progress rate that could help them make a bowl game this year. And coach talked a little bit about last night, the bowl situation that they're in right now and the credit that, that you mentioned of David Wedley and, and his impact on your program and how you guys are in a, a good spot right now looking ahead at the bowl game and, and what could happen with you guys. Yeah, I mean, that's just, uh, I think that's just a fantastic, um, you know, tribute to, to David Wedley, uh, what he's done with our program, our program's insistence and, and, and involvement. Um, and dedication to academics. We've, we've promised these players and their families that that was something we would invest in and we're serious about. We've held players out of practice for it. We've done a lot of different things in regards to letting them know we're serious about academics. Yeah. And uh, to see this come out in the back end and be something that's, that's potentially tangible for these guys in that realm, um, academically for the university, for the school, for the program, for our academic advisor, David Wedley, who's fantastic and a huge reason why we do what we do. Yeah. Um, man, I, I, think, I think it's fantastic. I'm looking forward to, to seeing how it all plays out. Well, very excited. We're excited, so I'll leave my suitcase open just in case we're headed somewhere this December. But come out to UNLV tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Hope to see all of Las Vegas out there outside of UNLV's student union as the UNLV football team will be painting the cannon red. Hope to see all of Las Vegas and just want to say a big thank you to Coach Royo for being on the Red Zone with us. And thank you for giving me this platform to uh, share these amazing stories. Yeah, but appreciate. coming up next, we're catching up with the undefeated Runnin' Rebels. Kevin Kruger and his squad are 7-0 after dropping 126 points last night against Life Pacific. We'll hear more from Kruger and how UNLV is on track to jump into the AP rankings. Well, it's been nothing but dubs for UNLV this season, taking home the SoCal Challenge Trophy after sweeping Southern Illinois and Minnesota on the road this week in Southern California. But the Rebels dropped 126 points last night at Thomas and Mack against Life Pacific, where almost every player on the team last night saw playing time. The Rebels have dominated their non-conference schedule so far this season and will look to beat San Diego on the road this Saturday for a 7 p.m. tip-off at USD. No, oh, very good team. A very good team. It'll be an, another great challenge for us. Uh, you know, they, they, it'll be our first true road game. So uh, it, it, we know that, you know, they'll they'll be ready. And uh, we know they've, they've got a couple games this week we'll be able to watch. And uh, and we'll be able to use this week to get ready for them. But, yeah, we've got, we've got a good slate of games coming up before before Christmas break. And uh, But I, I know our guys will be excited. 
to be able to, to go in there and, and take on, kind of have that true road game against a team that, and they'll know a couple of the guys, but they've got a couple of transfers that came in that, that our guys know and some of, some of them have played against. So uh, it'll be another great test for us. So now we are packing our bags with the Runnin' Rebels as Kevin Kruger will join the Red Zone for the rest of the Runnin' Rebels season. Just recapping a great UNLV football season with Coach Arroyo. Hope to see all of you guys out at UNLV Student Union at 11.30 a.m. to paint the cannon red. Coach Arroyo said his full squad will be out there and maybe we'll see them in, in some paint suits as well. I don't know what you need to bring, but be there at 11.30 at UNLV. Thanks for tuning in to another awesome episode of of the Rev Zone. See you guys next week here on Fox 5. Thanks for watching.